everybody and happy new year this is the first vlog of january so yeah get used to looking at this horrible face for another year potentially we'll see how we go today i have decided i am finally going to get round to that last meet the horses vlog because people ask about it so much and i've just been so lazy with it so today is the day uh, but it's the dreaded meet the babies i've kind of held off doing this one because they mainly live out, they don't come in that much. I'm just walking down to the field now. <laughs> um, and I was gonna get them all in to do it, but I thought actually it might be easier if I do at least the two little girls. Look at this mud! Oh, winter's not the one. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the two little ones in the field. They'll probably come and trample me in a second. Um, and then potentially Ari in the field. And then Ace, who's like the guardian, uh, well, yeah, he's in at the moment, so I'll go and talk about him. Uh, but we'll start with the youngsters. Look, it's raining. Oh, dear. This might not work. <laughs> Can you see the coming? Watch my demise. Hi, little sausages. Uh, Jaffa is out here at the moment because he was on a little bit of a winter break. But you've already heard about him, so... We won't talk about you, Jaffmeister, but here they are, little terrors. You're the biggest terror. Um, yeah, I will sort of get set up, pick a pony to start with, and we'll get chatting. Hi. People want to meet you. People want to meet you. Well, no, they won't stop following me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, are you on one at a time? Dun monster here is Brinny. Uh, this bay, sort of going grey, is Winnie. And this is Ari. Okay. Hi guys, okay, I am back. The eagle eyed amongst you will realise I'm wearing different clothes. And that is because the other day I spent 20 minutes of my life stood in this field in the rain, in the wind, with four young horses trying to kill me, only to get inside and try and edit the video and realize that you cannot hear anything I'm saying because the wind is that bad. So I've scrapped all of me chatting and I'm back and I've got four youngsters who are actually nice and calm today because the weather, although it's cloudy, it's quite pleasant. It's, it feels quite spring-like. So we're going to jump straight back in where I left off. I'm going to leave the uh, other bit that I filmed with Ace in because that was fine. I was in a stable. And we're just going to jump straight in and we're going to start with the eldest, who is this lovely chap here, Ari. Imagine how that feels. Ari, come back. Okay, so Ari doesn't like me getting too close to him while he's eating, clearly. Um, but he is Lara's foal and he's coming up for three, but he was a very late foal. He was born in August. So although I am going to start doing stuff with him this year, not till late summer because I don't want to overface him. And he's still very sort of weak. He's gangly. He's like, he's just growing up and not anything else. So yeah, when he's not got his rug on, he's, he's really like just big and Mmm, that's cool. Never thought I'd be doing that on a vlog. But his show name is Master Arion. Like I said, he's Lara's foal, so he's half Irish sports horse. And then he's half Westophelian, which is warm blood. Um, we chose a really, really lovely stallion. His name is Astral 53. Uh, it was actually quite a long story getting Lara in foal. She had basically gone lame just before I went to uni. And we were kind of like, well, we don't want to sell her. Uh, but at the same time, I can't like do the rehab with her because I wasn't there for long enough to like do the six weeks walking, yada, yada, yada. Um, so we thought actually like she's such a lovely mare, we'll put her in foal because I sort of really wanted to have another one like Lara. So we found a stallion that only did AI, who was lovely, but unfortunately we just couldn't get Lara in foal um, using AI, which is artificial insemination. Uh, and it was getting like really late, as you've just heard, he's a really late foal, so we were getting to like right to the end of the breeding window. So we were like, right, okay, we just, we'll just get a stallion that will cover naturally because for maiden mares, you tend to have a better chance if you do a natural covering. Um, so lo and behold, we somehow came across um, Astral 53. He's at a stud called College View Stud. I cannot recommend enough. I think I've spoken about them on my channel before. 
I think they've got four stallions now. Just literally, Pat and Sarah are just the most lovely, lovely, lovely people and they they couldn't have been more helpful and yeah, you'll you'll see how much we like them because Winnie, we also use the same stallion because yeah, just I can't rate it enough, but if you're looking to have a foal, definitely check them out. Anyway, so that is Ari's daddy. He was born back at our old place. Our good friend um, actually folded him for us. He went to her house, which was just down the road. She also folded Winnie because mum and I are just too squeamish and we were worried if something went wrong, we wouldn't you know, know what to do. Whereas she has loads and loads of experience. Uh, so yeah, he was brought into our lives two and a bit years ago now. Um, and he's just so sweet. He was quite like a bolshy little thing. Uh, going through his like yearling phase. Uh, we obviously had him gelded because didn't want a stallion. Uh, but yeah, he went through a bit of a bolshy phase where he was quite sort of reary and naughty, but luckily he's really, really mellowed. Um, you'll see in, a, in one of my Vlogmas vlogs, I've actually started doing some in hand work with him, just trying to sort of get him to trust me a bit and getting him walking over things because he was just, because he's the first one we ever bred, I think we kind of molly cuddled him a bit. Um, so now he just kind of needs to see the big wide world a bit and be a big boy. Uh, but yeah, I'm really, really hoping that I'll keep Ari for life. That is like my dream, but obviously we never know. The sort of idea in my head is that I will back him this summer and then break him properly next year and then start sort of like competing him very, very low level early next year and then into the following year 2022 gosh that seems so far away so yeah hopefully eventing in 2022 that feels weird saying um but he's he's got some serious nice breeding i mean his dad had gone up to 130 show jumping i believe and medium or advanced dressage that was all before he was i think it was seven he had a really bad injury so it sort of cut his career very short um but he's definitely got the scope he's got siblings that are competing massive show jumping like crazy high show jumping show jumping i'd never want to do basically his half sister and i actually know her owner is competing at four star like new four star so not five star she's done blenheim so yeah he's definitely got the potential in him obviously i don't want to do anything like that i'm too wussy but uh, yeah i'm hoping that he is probably going to be like a novice horse, novice two star horse for me. That is kind of the plan, but obviously I would love to get him to Babington Grassroots if I could, if that's still going. So, so yeah, that's just kind of, that's Ari. And that is the hope for him. I'm gonna put some clips of video in so you can see what he looks like without a rug on and see what his markings are. But he was bob on what I wanted because I didn't want something with loads and loads of white like Lara. And bizarrely, if you look at his face, it's not got loads of white on, whereas Lara has obviously got the half white face, half brown. So I was really chuffed with his markings. You're a good boy, Ari. So that is Ari. Master Arion is his show name. Then we will go to, hmm, we'll go to our, our other home breads. So we've only had the bread two foals. Uh, we actually did have another mare have a foal, but we didn't technically breed it because we bought the mare without knowing she was pregnant. Don't even ask, it's a long story. Anyway, this here is Winnie. Her show name is Rivendell Arwin. Um, so yeah, it was like Arwin, we called her for a bit and then it just got shortened to Win, and now it's Winnie because it's easier to scream across the field. Oh, I've got to say how big Ari is. Ari is probably verging on 15 hands. So where are you? Yeah, he's probably nearly 15 hands. So I'm hoping he'll make like a nice 15 two to 16 hands depending on how it goes he's sort of shot up so i'm thinking he might not go up that much more he might just fill out but yeah he's about 15 hands winnie over here is probably she's probably about 14 hands you know and she is only 18 months so her birth date is in are you june or july how terrible is that i think you're july again another late one um, but her mum is actually Jam, so we brought Jam over from Ireland when she was three with the hope of having a foal. We sort of really wanted a Connie partbred foal. Um, we were going to use another covering that we actually already had paid for, which was the AI one for Lara. Uh, but then in the end we were just so, so chuffed with Ari and like 
Pat and Sarah were just so amazing. We thought actually we're really keen to send uh, jam back to the same stud and have another one out of Astral. So lo and behold, Winnie Woo popped out. She was born, I was gonna say last year, but it wasn't last year, cause that was 2019. She was born the year before last um, into the hottest summer we had on record. Hi Brinny, I'm doing you in a minute. Uh, so yeah, we sort of joke that she's a bit of a Mediterranean baby because she's so used to hot weather that when it like rains and is really cold, she is a wuss. Like she just hides and yeah, doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna stay out in the field. She's a bit of a baby. And they come back. I hate when they make me follow them like this. Woo woo. So again, she should really be a little bit smaller than Ari because Jam is slightly smaller than Lara. I'm gonna follow you regardless. So you may as well just sit and talk. I mean this way. Uh, but again, I, th I think she's going to be sort of between 15 to and 16 hands. But you never know with youngsters. It's so hard to tell at this age. We're just walking, walking and talking. Uh, and plan for her, it's hard to say, again, like Ari, but I would love to be able to keep her. It would be really special to me to have two homebred horses out eventing and competing. Um, but we, you never know. But again, I mean, it's the same as Ari, the same stallion. So in theory, she should be more than capable of doing novice and two star. And obviously Jam's got a good jump, so fingers crossed. But I'll give you a little, you can see her a bit better there. Yeah, because she's only about 18 months, so she's sort of going through a bit of a funny, a funny looking stage. This is not fun being in the field with all these youngsters. That is Winnie. She is currently bay, as you can see, but when she was um, a foal, she was getting little grey like eyebrows and grey tips of her ears, which she's still got. So I'm almost certain she's going to be turning grey. Who knows when? I want her to sort of wait a bit, and then I have a really nice dark grey horse. <laughs> You're going to get cast. Win. Get up. You're going to get cast. Up you get. So graceful. <laughs> Do you feel silly? Last but not least, this little munchkin who is just so cute. The weird thing is, is she was the naughty one, like. About a month ago, they go through phases of being the naughty one and she was the one that we were like, oh, she's so naughty. And now she's going through a good phase, but that is just typical youngsters. So this here is Brinny. Her show name is Brinathan Catalina. Um, a few of you are gonna recognize the Brinathan bit. That is because she's a relative of Bear. So Bear is Brinathan Silver Locket. Um, and this is actually Bear's half sister. So we bought her the year before last, oh my God, I'm so, I really want to say last year. I might be getting my dates muddled, guys, because it's early January and I have no idea what's going on. Uh, but we went to the Welsh sales, the same one we actually got Jaffa from, but the year before. And we basically knew we were gonna be weaning Winnie and we wanted a little friend for her. At the time, we hadn't brought Ari up to this new house because he was staying with a friend of ours. Um, so yeah, we wanted something to wean Winnie with. We were thinking more two or three year old, but then we saw her and we were just like, we can't not have her because she was just so similar looking to Bear. She's got this beautiful little face and just absolutely adorable. Like she'd be nicely handled and everything and she was just a real sweetie. So you were five or six months when we bought you. You were born in May, you guys do the maths. She was born in May and we bought her in October. There you go, I've given you a minute to do the maths. <laughs> Comment below how long, how old she was when we bought her. She's just been a real sweetie. She was turned out with Ace to begin with, who you're gonna meet in a minute. Um, yeah, to sort of settle in. And then within no time really, we turned her out with Winnie and Jam because we hadn't actually weaned them yet. And she was just, she just slotted straight in. It was just adorable. Like she sort of treated Jam like her mum and she, like Winnie is like her big sister, even though she's actually older, but Winnie's bigger. Uh, yeah, and it was just really sweet. They were just playing and having a really, really nice time. So I was so glad that we bought her at this age because I think it's just 
so sweet. Uh, but then she really, really helped Winnie when it came to weaning jam because she sort of had a friend that she could stay with. A bit like I don't have a friend now. Whatever. So yeah, she has been an absolute godsend and she's just so cute. We've been really, really pleased with her. And she moves. I don't know if I have many videos of her moving because I'm often running if they're trotting towards me. But she's got a really, really flashy trot. So I think she's going to be a lovely little competition pony, just like her elder sister, Bebe. Hi, Jaff. You've already been in the vlog, my love. So plan for her is to break her alongside Winnie. I quite like having multiple youngsters to do at once at the same stage because it just it's almost quicker when you've got two because you can just you know get going so she'll be broken at the same time and produced a little bit depending on how big she makes and how talented she is i might sort of keep her till she's five or six to do some eventing on maybe get her back to badminton like bear that would just be amazing i want to get around badminton on a done well she <laughs> whether it's bear or brinny um and then she will be sold at some point i imagine but not making any set plans she is just quite diddy at the moment she's it's hard when they're not standing next to each other but she's sort of significantly smaller than winnie but i'm just praying that she makes 14 2. that is kind of if she makes 14 2 i'll be absolutely buzzing uh but she may well only sort of make 14 14 1 like bebe but those are all of my naughty naughty youngsters um, plans for them for this year I am going to do obviously Ari's going to be backed um, but all three of them are going to do some in hand work and potentially some loose jumping uh, maybe not for the girls because they might be too weak but Ari will certainly do some loose jumping this year to see if he's got like a pop in him or not uh, but yeah I'm they're just they're really exciting to sort of have in the field like Breeding your own, we kind of thought, oh, it's so long before you can actually do anything. But honestly, the time has flown. It's weird to think that I'll be getting on Ari this year. Like, crazy. <laughs> Jaffa's like, why aren't you talking about me? Jaffa, you made it in the early vlog. It's all right. Handsome little boy. He loves being out here with them. So adorable. But yeah, these are my cute little youngsters. And... Hopefully you guys will be seeing more of them on my channel in the next few months slash years, depending on who you want to see more of. Uh, but also make sure you head over to my Instagram because I do post about these little munchkins. And if I do funny in hand work with these two over the summer, I will obviously be putting that on Instagram and probably vlogging it. But now I'm going to cut back to Meg from the other day and I will introduce Ace and then this video will be over. You're just so cute. Hello. Oh, Ari, look at you swinging. Mm-hmm. Good mover, boy. This little groom train here. I'm doing Winnie. Winnie's doing Ari. Ari's doing Brinny. And Brinny's doing my foot. Because <laughs> she doesn't like getting hair in her mouth. <laughs> you funny babies. And you. Hey. <laughs> Good girl. You two should do each other. That's it. Come on, Win. Scratch him. Ari, scratch back. Brinny's more convenient, thanks. One sleepy foal. And then we go next door. And there's another sleepy foal. Slightly less sleepy. This one's having a good snore. Oh, Jam, what's she like? Okay, I have come inside in the warm. I say warm, it's warmer than me, stood out in the rain and wind. 
Good boy. I'm sat in his manger, which he's not very impressed about. And I'm sat in his food, which he's also not impressed about. This is Ace. He is my sort of first proper competition pony that we owned. Um, or that I like got myself. I had a handy down from my brother that we owned and then I had a couple of nice sort of loan ponies. Um, but he was like my first proper like competition pony, like a venting pony. Um, he is now the grand age of 29. He turns 30 in May. Don't you old man? Uh, so we'll obviously be having a big party for that. He's full Connemara. Let me try and twist around a bit. Whoop. There you go, you can see him sort of there. That's not a very flattering angle, but that is him. Um, he's about, he's, well, we bought him as 148, but his back has dipped so much now, he's like a camel. So he's 148 on his withers and then like 12 hands on his back, bless him. His show name is Western Pride, such a cute name. And he's honestly just an absolute hero. We got him, I think he was about 16 when we got him. He'd been out of work for a couple of years because he was a bit naughty. He'd like really scared the girl that was riding him. He kept, he had this, yes, you did. <laughs> he had this habit of bucking people off like when he landed from a jump because he loves jumping. Um, so yeah, they basically bought him and then the girl didn't ride him for like two or three years. He was literally just sat in a field. Uh, and then we heard about him and went to go and see him. Couldn't do very much because we literally dragged him in from the field. So I like hacked him out a little bit and had a little walk and trot but that was kind of it uh but he was just really sweet and genuine and he had been there and done it before like he'd come over from ireland so we knew he would hunt and everything um so we were just kind of like it's it's too good an opportunity to pass by because we couldn't afford a horse that had like a pony that had done it before if it was in work at that time. So we kind of just bit the bullet and took the chance. I think I was about nine coming up for 10. We bought him at the end of summer, I believe. So I was gonna be 10 in November. Uh, and yeah, it was a roller coaster ride to start with. He was so naughty. Um, I think they brought him back into work for us a bit because I don't remember having to do loads of hacking. Mum would remember better than I would. Um, but I do remember like the first the first month or couple of months we had him, he was so badly behaved. He used to buck like mad. Uh, I used to fall off him nearly every time I rode him and mum was just like, what have we bought? Um, we nearly sent him to a dealer to be sold because we were just like, we can't ride him. Uh, and then the penny just kind of dropped. It was almost like this massive testing period. And then one day he was just like, oh, okay, yeah, you're fine. And then he was just incredible. Like I literally had so much fun on this pony. We did all the pony club teams together. We, I think we did intermediate dressage and then like novice eventing and jumping. Uh, we did loads of school teams together. He was just insane. We did pony club camp. We hunted loads. The best hunting pony I've ever, 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 ever sat on. He was just incredible. It's like his apps, like just, it's just in his blood to hunt. Um, yeah, he would jump anything, like I'd jump five bar gates on him. I wouldn't do that on any of mine now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, amazing. I used to hunt with a Vista who had like massive hedges and he would just be up the front the whole way and jump absolutely everything. So that was an amazing experience as a child to have. Yeah, he was just really, really good for me. Like he was nicely schooled. So he sort of got me into dressage a bit because he was really nice to do it on. He got great um, marks from the judges because he was sort of ever like so consistent and just like had a nice tempo and everything. So that I kind of think is what got me into the dressage, which then got me into the eventing. Um, so yeah, I sort of have Ace to O for that because he was so good cross country. Like obviously when they hunt well, they tend to be good cross country. Um, and he was just amazing. He jumped everything. I remember going to Astonley Walls, like one of the last times I took him cross country schooling uh, and he was jumping around intermediate fences, like BE intermediate. So the, they were massive and he was just popping them. He just loved it. It was one of those ponies that show jumping really wasn't his strong point and he'd sort of get a bit nervous, um, but cross country, he'd, he'd just jump anything. He's sort of like Lara in that sense, like show jumping, you couldn't really jump him up the levels. Um, but cross country, he just loved it. So he'd kind of do absolutely anything for you. Uh, saying that, I think we did do a couple of 110 courses show jumping, but not particularly well. He was quite poly because he used to get so keen. Like he was strong. This is, um, if you guys watch Vlogmas, 
when I was on about my worst fall, where I went team chasing and I got run through a hedge with barbed wire because I couldn't stop. That was on A. Naughty. Uh, yeah, he was just incredibly strong and whizzy. Like out hacking, he would just jog the whole way. No matter whether you're alone or in company, whether you're going home or not, he was just jog, 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 jog. Just quite a highly strung sort of competition pony, but I just absolutely loved him. He was right up my street because I like sort of whizzy, feisty ponies. I was just really lucky to have him as a kid. Like we were so lucky to come across him and like get him really cheap considering like he actually did have a lot of experience and he was a really nicely sort of schooled and put together pony. Not that you'll be able to tell now. I'm gonna try and like dribble pictures in and out um, when I can because it was kind of like before the video stage that I had him. Uh, but yeah, I'll put some pictures in because we've got heaps of pictures of your old man, haven't we? You're literally so gorgeous, I love you. Um, but anyway, so I kind of stopped riding him Ah, uh, that was it. So, Ace qualified for the eventing champs again. I think he won his qualifier. Broke my heart. So cute. Um, and we actually qualified as a, a team. And then he'd always... He must have been about 18, 19 at this point. Maybe maybe we got you younger than 16. Honestly, like, I can't remember all the, all the ins and outs. Um, but yeah, he was probably about 18, 19... Yeah, no, it must have been 19. And he qualified for the champs, and it was like midsummer, and I was like, oh my god, yes. So I remember training with my teammate. We were going up the gallops, and her pony spooked into Ace, and he had to like shoot sideways, and he did his check legament. And it was honestly the most heartbroken I think I've ever been. It was just, it was so hard, because I sort of knew it was my last season on him, and he'd qualified and everything, and I couldn't go. Um, so I had to borrow my brother's pony to take, but she just, she was lovely, but she just wasn't really an eventer, so she was not very good with water, so she actually had a stop at water. Um, but that was, yeah, that was really, really sad, and I kind of thought that was his sort of ridden career over at that point. Um, but he actually made a really good recovery, he came back into work the following year, and I sort of did a load of, like, walking with him and, like, did a few dressage tests. Uh, and at that point, I kind of just, like, outgrown him potential-wise because of how old he was. Um, but we decided, actually, he's not ready to retire. So we found a really lovely lady who became a very dear friend of ours. Uh, and she hacked him out. I think it was until he was about 25 he stayed in work. Um, and she just loved him to pieces. She did, like, clinics on him and had lessons. Um, and yeah, she was amazing with him. And you know, I was saying how like joggy he was the whole way out hacking. He hacked the best he ever hacked with her. Like they just had this really special bond. It was so lovely. Um, but that was amazing for him to stay in, in work until that age. And I think it just did him the world of good now. So he at the moment is just obviously completely retired, uh, but he's sort of got a part-time job, which is babysitting all of the little youngsters you've just seen. He's amazing with it. We um, introduced him to Lara and Ari one winter because Lara was like, Lara was just kind of finding it quite hard. We had a really tough winter and you could just tell it was taking it out of her having to look after Ari the whole time because she was one of those mums that like completely put Ari first. So if she didn't like sleep or anything, that was like, she didn't care because she just wanted to be watching Ari. So we were kind of worried about Lara. And so we thought actually like, do you think we could introduce Ace? to sort of help look after him, to co-parent, if you like. And it was weird because Lara's not really a horse, a horse horse. She likes people, not horses. But she just accepted Ace into the field and it was the cutest thing ever. I don't know if I've got videos, but I'll certainly try and put some pictures in. Ace was just like Ari's granddad and it was just adorable. Like, he was obsessed with him. They both loved each other so much. Lara like got to have a bit of a rest from parenting because she'd trust Ace to watch Ari. So like, if Ari was sleeping or Lara was sleeping, Ace would go and watch over them and it was just so cute. And from there, it's kind of just been his job. He's been a babysitter. So he um, sort of took care of Ari once we weaned. And then, yeah, he came to us, obviously when we moved house, came here with us. And he, he was uh, helping Jam be a parent. He went out with Jam. Uh, and then obviously has completely taken over the reins since they've all been weaned and now he looks after all of the youngsters. Uh, but yeah, he's just, 
he's just amazing and the youngsters absolutely love him. Um, so because it's depths of winter now, he's sort of coming in every day. The youngsters mainly stay out, but because he's 29, we bring him in to like just have a bit of a chill and sort of warm up and stuff. But they all like whinny for him when he leaves and whinny for him as soon as they see him. And it's just so sweet. So he's been absolutely irreplaceable in that sense because it's just so nice for them to have like an older horse that they can kind of look up to and that puts them in their place a bit, but at the same time looks after them. So yeah, you've just been amazing, AC, and you're absolutely one of a kind and you are very much loved. You see, he's still got character. He's still a spooky idiot. He was always quite spooky and snorty, weren't you? Uh, but yeah, I thought it'd be quite nice for you guys to meet my like first proper, proper competition pony that got me into eventing and stuff. Um, but yeah, you've been an absolute superstar and I really hope that you can sort of stick around a bit longer. I definitely want you to make it to 30, but he's looking amazing at the moment. Like his back's obviously dipped and he's lost his tummy muscles, but he's just incredible. He's got so much energy and he's got so much spark about him still. Uh, but yeah, it's just, we're just going to obviously monitor him and, um, he knows I'm talking about horrible stuff. Yeah. Just keep an eye on him and you know, when it's sort of. When he lacks his personality and he's not, doesn't look happy anymore, well then, sort of, oh, I feel really bad saying it. You know what I'm getting at. I think he understands me, so I'm not going to say anything else. Uh, but yeah, this is Ace, or Western Pride. Brilliant. Oh, I've got a numb bum. But I hope you enjoyed this last instalment of Meet the Horses. You can see them a bit more there. Um, it's, yeah, I'm glad that I've actually finally got around to doing it. Hopefully this has been interesting. I wasn't sure if you guys were going to like this one as much because it's like you're not meeting my competition horses. But I guess it's just nice to sort of see ones coming up through the ranks. And also my little angel who got me into eventing. Hey, old man, I'll have to get you more vlogs. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you shortly. It's going to be an exciting 2020, I hope. It's going to be lots of competing and hopefully qualifying for things and just, yeah, lots of vlogs. I'm going to really try and make a go of this YouTube thing. So please stay tuned and like and subscribe. AC, hey, so you're so cute. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will see you very, very soon. Goodbye.